Samurai Cop is a masterpiece. It has a guy who has never held a baseball bat in his life before. Stay back. This guy's mine. There's a huge henchman with the tiniest of feet, guy who holds his man boob when he gets shot, a random lion head on a wall that gets more screen time than 90% of the cast, largest guy in smallest container, and the first Oscar win for a film with the best pun. Why did you come under? I'm an undercover cop. Since then it's become a cult classic and in this video I'll explore seven reasons why it's one of the best movies ever made alongside The Room, Bademic and pretty much every movie Steven Seagal has ever made. Are you really as good as they all say you are? Every once in a while. The first reason is the dialogue. It's got everything from how to talk to women. Keep it up. Oh it's up and ready. Uh, you just keep it warm. It's warm and ready to how tough guys talk to each other. I want him dead! I want his head on this piano! I will bring you his head and I will place it on your piano. To making racially appropriate jokes with your colleagues. Captain Roman's gonna burn my ass. Yeah, he's gonna burn it. Charcoal black. <laughs> it is black. Right on. <laughs> and let's not forget how to be fluent in foreign languages. He speaks fluent Japanese. What does katana mean? It means Japanese sword. Are you Fuji, Fujiyama? He's, uh, what's his name? Omaha, Yamaha, whatever his face his name is, right? Because rumor has it that Tarantino was the ghostwriter for the dialogue, and boy, can you feel the flow, the wit, the elegance. You'd think that a script would actually need to make sense, but what's the point in that when you can just ask actors to make the things up on the spot? And what I did was I jumped the fence, and I stole one of her chickens, and then killed it. Great. Because I really wanted to impress you. Now that is true art, freedom of expression, freedom to make shit up as you go along. Number two are the action scenes. Believe me when I say that the only film that comes close to this is the new Mission Impossible film. Look at this car chase scene. Yes, it's high octane, adrenaline fueled action, but something is really lacking and it's still no match for this. Now it's so inclusive and ahead of its time that the main character is doing audio description for any blind people who might be watching. Shoot! Shoot it! Shoot it! Shoot it! You got it! Yeah, I got the best. It's got everything. Helicopters, cars, a van full of bad guys, high speed turns that your 90 year old grandparent could do, bullets that don't even break glass, and the best thing of all, absolute no respect for continuity. And what about the fight scenes? Rumor has it that in preparation for the fight scenes, instead of using real martial artists, they asked the 10 year old kid to choreograph the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so you get something so authentic and real that even Oscar winning films like Dumb and Dumber try to copy it. <laughs> Number three is something that this film pioneered in the 90s before this whole stream of annoying YouTubers decided to let you see what their reactions were like to random internet clips. This was the moment in time where in movie character cams caught important reactions from secondary characters. Why you might ask, well, why not? Why do people climb a big lump of rock like Everest? Do you know why a ship floats? And a stone cannot. Why do people spend billions to go stand on a floating rock in space? Because it's freaking cool to be first and these guys scaled the YouTuber reaction video genre way before its time. And speaking of ascending mountains, number four is the sheer breathtaking acting on show. It's more tour de France than tour de force, from rousing monologues about injustices of mankind. And yeah, this is the land of opportunity for legitimate business, not for death merchants who distribute drugs to our children through schools and on the streets. To the most realistic walk down the stairs a man has ever done. To the Oscar winning how to stand up like a man and how to roll down a hill like a Brazilian footballer. To the best bad guy burning, waiting to see if the scene is ending. Nope, not yet, I'll look the other way. And of course, how could we forget bad guys dying realistically? But 
you see, the real centerpiece of this film is this incredible acting between our hero and a sassy femi fatale kind of nurse lady. Would you like to fuck me? Bingo. Well then let's see what you've got. Doesn't interest me. Nothing there. Nothing there? Just exactly what would interest you? Something the size of a jumbo jet? Well, your doctor must have cut a big portion of it off. No, he, uh, he was a good doctor. Good doctors make mistakes, too. That's why they buy insurance. It's big. I want bigger. Hey, I have, uh... You can actually feel the electricity between them and taste the chlamydia in the air around them. At times you forget it's a film set. This is the power of great acting. It transports you to a completely different part of the world. This is the busy inner city ward of a hospital where instead of seeing patients, checking observations and administering medications, this nurse puts her hand down a random cop's pants and makes a clinical diagnosis of a petite circumcised penis. And so the line between cinema reality and a porno begins to blur. And this is exactly why this film is taught across every acting class in the US that Tommy Wiseau runs. Of all the A-list actors in this movie, one wildcard entry stole the show. Steve, with the fewest lines in the movie, but the most facial expressions. Joe. Hey Steve, how you doing? What's going on, Steve? Not much, sir. There's a nurse in there giving him an injection. He's burned pretty bad. A supporting Oscar win for Steve's eyebrows there for putting up a strong performance. How much acting experience has he got? Not much, sir. But boy, does he know how to deliver a line. They don't make extras like this guy anymore. You can feel that sense of my life depends on this moment kind of feel. Nowadays, you get extras that are placid and blend into the background, but not Steve. He's got more coke coursing through his body than blood. And this is what happens when you stay up all night doing the same lines over and over again. And I'm not even talking about the script. I feel like Steve has practiced those lines so many times, eventually those words just don't make any sense in his head anymore. Steve has transcended literature. He had three seconds to show the Academy his full range of acting, and in that one line of not much sir, you can see the confidence, the anger, the despair, the anguish. No other actor in cinema history was able to fit so many contradicting emotions in so little time. But was this all necessary, you might ask? Probably not, but they don't make extras like Steve anymore, and that is the true decline of Hollywood. And before we get on to one of the funniest cameos in movie history, number six is Frank the Tank. He's the lead that helps this movie rise to perfection. You see, with so much intricate and serious dialogue in this movie, you need a comedic release. And when you order Chris Tucker from Wish, you get Frank without a receipt and a leaflet that's in Chinese. Frank's meticulous questioning puts the D in detective work. Have you been circumcised? Shut up. And let's not forget the sheer wit of the man. He's a walking, talking pun machine. This scene wasn't even scripted, but was so good they kept it in the movie. Why did you come under? Because I'm an undercover cop. When the movie was over, the director looked back and thought there was one important ingredient missing from his masterpiece. For his main actor to look like a true Japanese speaker and a martial artist expert, he needed him to look like a South American footballer from the 80s. And so in came the wig. It gives our hero his superpower of bedding multiple women with the type of sleazy chat-up lines that would make a Me Too movement into a Me Three movement. I have to ask you some more questions. Police questions? Yeah. Let's just say some questions. In my car, come on. It also allows a guy who doesn't know that saying katana sword is like saying sword sword to do this. <laughs> It's such a pretty wig that one of our main villains has asked for a quick and aggressive selfie in the middle of the fight. And of course, there's the time that the wig almost came off and almost took all the superpowers away. But luckily for us, the bad guy was nice enough to put it back because he knows that you can try and kill a man, but never take off his wig in public. And if you want to see a full length recap of this movie, that's next week's video here on Crappy Film Fans. Hit the like, subscribe and bell and see you in the comments.